Thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, since the beginning of, of mankind, um, we've always had an issue when it comes to creating things. Um, but we are not limited by what we can imagine. Uh, we've, we imagined flight long before we achieved it. We imagined even walking on the moon long before we achieved it. But what allowed us to actually, in the end, achieve goals like that was the tools that we had at our disposal. And I want to talk a little bit about one tool in particular that I've been using over the last four years, and that is uh, 3D printing. Um, I'm not talking about 2D printing, just file print on Word and printing a photo, printing a Word document, that kind of thing. But that same basic premise can be used to create objects that you can use for everyday things. Um, I'll give you an overview of briefly how it works. Uh, this is an example of a 3D printer. You see another one here. Um, there are loads of these things around. They're more than you'd imagine. They used to be confined to professional space, but nowadays they uh, are actually accessible to us. They range from about $499 all the way up to about $2,000. They used to cost over $250,000 at one point. Now you can have one in your home making stuff. So how does it work? Um, this is an example of the range of machines that you can have. Uh, five machines back in 2006 were all that existed, pretty much, that you could make or buy, and now there's over 100, so they're everywhere. Um, how does it work? Uh, you take a 3D model, and you put that through your machine, slice it into layers, and then you uh, spit out a plastic um, model. In fact, the raw material for the printer is this stuff here. It comes on a big roll. It's just normal plastic, and it gets heated up and pushed through a nozzle that then gets woven together. And you can see on the picture, um, two pictures on the right showing the actual layers that are deposited. Now, the one at the top says 35 microns. To give you an idea of how thin that is, the average thickness of a human hair is 50 microns. So we are building up stuff in really, really, really fine layers. Now, talking about it's one thing, but actually seeing it work is another. There we go. So what you can see here is a digital representation of how a, a solid object is sliced. Um, you'll see as, as uh, it goes up and down, you see a cross section. Just like when you see an MRI scan or something like that, you can also see that the red lines aren't solid, so the inside of the model is actually hollow. That means that you're using less material, and that means it's better for the environment. It also means um, the parts are lighter. So for example, you get a human bone, you snap it in half, I don't recommend you do that, especially not to your own leg, but you snap it in half, you will see there's a lot of air in there, and that's because you're not actually getting a lot of benefit from filling that with material. Just as lots of parts you buy today are made out of solid plastic, these kind of technologies allow us to use the bare minimum but still get a good end result. And now if the second video plays, you can actually see a time lapse of uh, one of my prints. This is actually just a little robot, it's a bit of fun. But um, you can see over the space of actually that was two hours, it printed a uh, full model. Um, You'll actually be able to see these printers working in person in the Connect Salon that I'm going to be in uh, later on, which is great. You'll be able to see the, the first hand, see some of the interesting stuff I've made. Um, designers are really excited about this because you can produce very organic shapes. You can see from this here, the wall is only 0.4 millimeters thick, but you end up with a pretty rigid part, and it's a really strange shape. You couldn't make this with normal injection molding or any other approach. This can only be produ produced by building up layer by layer. So designers are building chairs, lamps, um, all sorts of things. So my experience is I want to talk through some of my personal experiences, what I use this for on a daily basis. I'm a bit of a nerd, as you might have guessed, and I make circuit boards at home and things like that. And um, I found in the trash at my work this machine in the bottom, bottom left of the screen. This was a really expensive machine at one point, but it makes circuit boards. And you can see an example of that at the top. The problem is it came with these little tool holders to hold the milling bits that it uses to make the thing. These things were broken years ago. And I phoned the manufacturer, and I could not get a replacement. So I made a replacement out of plastic and printed seven of them. And I've now got the machine working just as it would. And it, it took no effort at all. Another example is I moved house recently. And um, I only went and broke my office chair in the move. I think I lent on it or something. And um, I needed one of these little plastic circular parts in order to fix it. So as opposed to throwing the chair away and buying a new one, I quickly mocked up that, that replacement part, printed it, and in a very short amount of time, literally 15 minutes, had my chair working fine again. Um, I want to also talk about um, what this means for recycling and trash and reusing stuff. So Buckminster Fuller, who you've already heard about today, says, pollution is nothing more than the resources that we are not harvesting. We allow them to disperse because we're ignorant of their value. 
Um, I think that's really cool when you look specifically at one thing that we all use on a daily basis, I'm sure, which is like soda bottles, water bottles, that kind of thing. In fact, there's a lot of those knocking around backstage. Look at the picture at the right. There's literally football fields of these produced. 60 million per day in the US alone. So what would be great is if you could use a machine like this. And there was a guy called Hugh Lyman on the web who produced this free, um, this free design that he's opening to everybody. You can change it, you can modify it. Um, it takes essentially ground up plastic bottles, ground up plastic, and it makes a filament just like that red stuff there that you can put in a 3D printer and turn into useful things. Now I'm talking, I've shown you some very strange aesthetic pieces and some very nerdy pieces, but there's some cool stuff as well. Like as an example, it's gonna be hard to see, but you can see it later is, I print myself uh, cell phone cases and stuff like that. People usually go out and spend 35 bucks. This cost me 40 cents to make. I can make one a day, I can make five a day, but um, it's very cool. I get a lot of requests to make phone cases. So if you guys want one, come at the Connect Salon, I'll see if I can make you one. Um, obviously not for everyone, it will take too long. <laughs> but um, anyway, what are the limits uh, to 3D printing? So um, I believe that this technology uh, is widely applicable to multiple things. So I'm talking about plastic just here in a little machine you can have in your home. But you can print uh, glass, silver, gold, titanium, ceramics, Literally, any material that you can think of, concrete, anything can be built in three dimensions. And there are lots of machines out there that allow you to do that. Um, there's some cool pictures here. There's a guy on the left that's actually printing these big old sculptures out of like a powder kind of material, like a plaster. Um, and bottom right, you've got even a guy that's hypothesizing you can build entire houses. Um, even NASA are interested in this, so they can send robots to the moon and get them to build all the launch pads and build all the like basic structures before we even have to go there. Um, and the top right one, my fiance is particularly e excited about, and she wants me to print chocolate, which people are doing at the moment. So I'm going to convert this one to print cupcake toppers and things like that. Um, so literally, that'll keep us sweet. So, <laughs> um, how do I get 3D printing? So currently, as I say, the price point of these machines is still fairly high. You know, for a decent one like this one here, you need about $1,200. For the one you saw at the beginning, about $1,400. And the one you'll see outside, about $1,500. So, but we are seeing that price plummet. Um, if you don't want one, uh, to, to invest that much money in one, there are loads of places that you can do things like this nowadays. So there are places propping up all across the US and all across the world called hacker spaces and maker places. I don't know if any of you have heard of them or been to one, but essentially it's like a big garage full of toys and, when I say toys, I mean machines and <laughs> milling machines and laser cutters and blasting chambers and all sorts of cool stuff that allow you to pretty much make anything out of metal, uh, wood, um, and we have some examples of that out in the Connects booth too. Um, and I want to introduce one person who uses these tools on a daily basis to achieve great things. And his name is Mark. Please do not reach for this. But this is an example of the types of things that you can make. <laughs> so this is a quadcopter. Mark made it using various machines at his disposal through using a hackerspace or maker place. Um, it uses laser cutting, it uses CNC machining, it uses a bunch of different techniques, but by having access to tools like this, really it, it expands anything that you can make. And I invite you to go out and see what you can make by getting access to these tools. What we can make is limited by the tools that we have, but what we can think is limitless. Just don't get it too close to me. <laughs> Good landing. Oh. Touchdown. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.